Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. This is going to be the last video of this series on how to use the cross-platform native plugin in Unity. When I started this series, I was only planning on covering the features that I thought should be included in every single mobile game that I create. There's many features that this plugin provides, but the features that I utilize and that I think are most important are sharing, billing, game services, and cloud saving. And so those are the features that I have focused on in this series. Now, although this is the last video for this series, this will probably not be the last video I do on the cross-platform native plugin. And so if you want to learn more about this plugin, then make sure that you keep your eyes open for future videos that we do on the cross-platform native plugin. But with that said, let's get into this lesson. So for this lesson, I want to once again go through the build process for your game on the iOS platform and show you the steps you need to take in order to get your game working with all of these features and published on the App Store. To get started, we need to go to our build settings in our Unity project. And here you'll need to make sure that you have all of your scenes added to your build order. We'll then click on player settings, which will bring up this window here. And from here, we need to make sure that we have all of the basic build settings entered. This includes the name, company, icon, package name, version, and bundle version code. I'm not going to go through all of the player settings because I want to get to the Xcode project. And you should already be familiar with the player settings. Once you have your player settings set up, we'll then build our Xcode project. Once the Xcode project is finished, we then want to open it up. Once it's opened, we want to click on our project in the left-hand column. This will open up the general tab. And in here, we need to set up our app signing. So I'm going to enable automatically manage signing, and then I'm going to select our provisioning profile. This will remove all of these errors I was receiving. From here, we then want to go over to the capabilities tab, and in here we can once again see all of the different features we can enable for our game. In here, we need to enable the same features that we're using. And so that is Game Center, in-app purchases, and iCloud. Now the last thing that we need to do in order to make everything work properly is enable the C and Objective-C module. This is a step that I've been taking ever since I built my Snake Cube game in order to get that project working properly. But this might actually be something that's not required, and it's something that you can actually test out for yourself. But to enable this setting, we want to go over to the Build Settings tab, and we'll search for C and Objective-C. We'll then enable this setting, and from here we can then go to the Product drop-down menu, and we'll select Clean Build Folder. We'll then go to the same drop-down menu, and select Archive. Once it's finished building, we'll have this pop-up window with your Archive Build. Then with the build selected, we'll click the Distribute App button. This will then bring up another window, and we can just proceed through these options until we get to where it says Upload. We'll then click this button, and from here we then just need to wait until we see our build in iTunes Connect. Once it says the app is successfully uploaded, we can then go to our iTunes Connect account, and with our app selected, we can click the Activity tab, and on this page, we should be able to see that indeed our app was successfully uploaded and that it is currently being processed. Once it's finished being processed, we can then select the build version, and then in the build section, we can click the plus icon and add our new build. From here, we can then save and submit for review. This will take us to this page where we can specify that we are not using encryption, but if you're using ads in your game, then you need to select yes on the second option. And if you're using Unity ads, then I just select the next first two options. Finally, we need to accept the confirmation that we are the owner of this application, and then we can click Submit. From here, we can then see that our app now says Waiting for Review. This process should take a couple of days, in which your game will either be accepted or rejected. If it's accepted, then you should see it available on the App Store within a short time. And if it's not, then you will just need to fix the errors that they give you for feedback, and then resubmit. Now if you followed this series closely, you should now have a working game with all of these features on both the App Store and Google Play. And this concludes this series on how to use some of the basic features for the cross-platform native plugin in Unity. Now if you enjoyed this series, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments below. And finally, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>